Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Guerra, your host, and I wanted to talk about the email list for the 2022-2023 cycle. Um, I have tried email lists before, and I, I didn't really like them, but uh, I realized how valuable they are for uh, people to kind of get a sense of what the process is as you're going through residency. So even if you're P1, P2, P3, uh, right around August, September is where things start to heat up a little bit because now you're getting invitations to uh, not only ASHP, and you should already be booked with your room. Like you really want to do that uh, actually in July and June, I think, uh, when you know the prices are, are ridiculously low. I think I paid like $100 total uh, for my Vegas trip. So for just the room and then, then the flights are another thing. But I wanted to talk about how to get on the email list, what's going to be on it, what's not going to be on it, uh, and uh, what you should be looking for. So I'm going to uh, build out the pharmacyresidencypodcast.com uh, website. Uh, right now I've, I've moved my domain servers, so uh, you're going to uh, not quite see it yet. Uh, but once I get it up and going, then it'll be a lot easier for me to just say, here's a template or here's a book or here's uh, a link to the podcast or the classes or whatever. Uh, so if you're watching this, uh, it is a video and uh, you can see what that's going to look like. And if anybody's been on my Memorizing Farm uh, website, it's going to be kind of the, the same thing where I help people with pharmacology, pharmacotherapy. All right, so uh, that's going to be the website. But what I did was I put an email list link on that site now. So if you want to join now, uh, you can go to memorizingfarm.com forward slash residency. Again, that's M-E-M-O-R-I-Z-I-N-G-P-H-A-R-M.com forward slash residency. Uh, and this email list uh, is for uh, earning a residency placement. So you only have to put your first name and email address. If you want to put your school and graduation year, that's great. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. Again, I just want a way that I have a smaller group uh, of people that I will be uh, contacting um, regarding. Uh, so when I make a book, I get free codes from Audible. So I will be sending the free codes uh, to that. And I'll show you some of the books that I have and that I'll be sending out. Uh, for example, we just wrote... A book with uh, one of my Appy students um, called uh, The Debt-Free Pharmacy Student. And I know some of you are like, yeah, well, that book would have been good about three or four years ago. Thanks. Appreciate it. But there's a lot of lessons in there that can really help you out. And if you're somebody that's thinking about uh, pharmacy school, it, it will help you. Uh, but you, it, it's kind of amazing, you know, when, when you've got the average right now at 170,000. Uh, if you are at a public school, it's 140. If you're at a private school, it's 200. Uh, but pharmacy students, uh, I think last year had $2 billion in uh, student loans. So it's a lot. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, to join the email list, memorizingfarm.com forward slash residency. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of those things uh, that are going to be on uh, the emails and uh, what is not going to be on the emails. All right, so the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, uh, right now it's pharmacyresidencypodcast.com, but that is actually just a link to this site, pharmacy.libson.com. Uh, that's the actual site. So if you ever want the links or you want to not deal with Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever it is, pharmacy.libson, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. It's liberated syndication. It's just a podcast hosting platform. Uh, and that's where you can always find um, the links and things like that. So again, kind of the last one I did. Apologize, it's been two weeks since my last uh, podcast. Uh, but you know, I got and sent out that the hotels were thirty-one dollars per person uh, in that that hotel for sixty-two dollars. So you know, I'm paying like one hundred and twenty dollars for hotel, uh, or I think I'm just going two days, maybe three. One hundred and eighty dollars. All right. Um, when we get to uh, kind of going back to the uh, website, what else is going to be on there? So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the books that are going to be on. So again, uh, it's you, if you're watching the video, it's a little bit easier. I'll, I'll talk as if you're not watching the video. But um, these are my books, and there's actually one that's missing. I'll have to put that on there, which is 
um, or what to do before residency if you're a student and you need help with those kinds of residency tips. Uh, but career residency entrepreneurship, uh, the strong residency letter of intent. Uh, so uh, the big thing is, you know, go past the template, make it a reflective process. The biggest mistake residents make is applying to the wrong place by writing an honest letter of intent and not using a template. It, you use the template to get started, but you don't just fill in the blanks for each one because you have to kind of go through that process and say, is this really somewhere that I wanna go? A strong ambulatory care residency letter of intent. Uh, that was with uh, Callie and she applied to seven sites and got seven interviews. And she's, uh, the reason she's on ice skates is because she is a, a national uh, ice skating champion. And she was very mindful about that and where she applied. And because of that, instead of like, okay, well, if I apply to 12, I have a better chance. If I apply to 16, I have an even better chance. That is false. Uh, if you just kind of pick one, you know, she was very mindful about it and, and got uh, those interviews. Uh, residency interview help kind of like, what do I do? Uh, and, and I have that kind of uh, uh, clapperboard from the movies because as soon as like you get that interview email, it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And it's like, okay, action. And this is what you do. Uh, phone interview survival tips. So phone interview, Skype interview, Zoom interview. Uh, how do you do that? It, it's a little bit different. Okay, it's a lot different. But there are a lot of things that you can do right and wrong. And the biggest one is the phone interview, which is the screening interview. And that one's 20 minutes. And for example, if you go over on just one question, you can completely lose the opportunity because uh, each of those five questions is probably worth a, you know, one fifth. And if you only answer four questions, it's like starting a grade with an 80%. 100 strong residency interview questions, answers, and rationales. It's just what it sounds like. It's 100 questions and uh, you can go on Amazon and see the reviews and somebody's like, oh my gosh, those were the questions. And uh, Brandon worked at Walgreens as an EXA and I worked at Walgreens as a pharmacist. But the same questions that we asked when we were hiring people, those are part of the question set that you use. And then of course there's re very residency specific questions. But what you want is, okay, what's the question? What would be an example answer? But then the rationale is kind of the, the gravy where you're like, okay, why, why did they ask that question? And these guys are busy. RPDs are busy. Residents are busy. They're not going to ask questions that aren't important or don't reveal something uh, and kind of figuring out those secrets. And then I, I don't know why, but this is the two-in-one bundle. You could get both books for the price of one. Uh, and people just tend to go to the individual book, but you can get them both for, for the same price. And I don't know. Um, so, uh, finding your unicorn job for pharmacists. So after, you know, graduating, what's a job that's perfect for you? Uh, and then how to, uh, build a pharmacy consulting business. Uh, I've actually got a uh, two other books, which I should probably put on there. All right. Through the magic of the internet, I've updated those. So influential dad empowered daughter by Ashley Clevens Hayes. And this one is a really kind of heartwarming, uh, book and, uh, the link will get you to the the audio and uh, you can listen to or read it, but uh, really how, our, how a parent can, can really empower a child and, and you know, if you're a parent, uh, it, it really will, will hit home. Uh, but she's also kind of a rock star as far as uh, career and things like that. And then read this before pharmacy residency. Um, this is almost a seven hour book and part of it is from, uh, we, we rewrote a book that's called Read This Before Medical School. And what it is, is about seven hours or six hours of explaining all the things that you kind of need to do uh, before you uh, apply to residency. But this one goes super deep into P1, P2, P3 year in terms of getting good grades uh, and succeeding that way. So um, uh, where the new book is going to kind of take you to the financial side, this really is uh, the one that takes you uh, to the academic side. And then I won't go through these, but uh, pharmacology, memorizing pharmacology, a relaxed approach, 
uh, and then second edition. Uh, but everybody that's with residency always likes the thrill of the case, which is pharmacotherapy and then pharmacotherapy, clinical pharmacy pearls, case studies, and common sense. Uh, Perils of Polypharmacy is coming soon. Uh, just uh, waiting for uh, Eric Christensen to be done with the... Um, uh, he's going to check my narration and make sure everything is right, pronunciations and things like that, and then hopefully we'll have that one out in a month. Um, anyway, uh, so those are the books, and, and those are uh, going to be available uh, soon. Uh, but let's go to kind of to the courses to kind of explain the residency.teachable uh, website for those of you that don't know, and uh, kind of what I'm updating you on and, and how I'm updating these courses. Uh, so there are six courses that I have right now. Uh, Extreme LOI Makeover is the most popular. Uh, and the pharmacology course is actually the, the second most popular. Those are uh, the two that uh, I really have a, a lot of people uh, that like. So uh, the CV one, I'll do your CV if you really want to. Um, but uh, what I'm really good at is story and narration and, and those types of things. So the LOI is kind of my, my bread and butter. But uh, if you want me to do your CV, I'll do it only because some people are like, well, I kind of want you to do a CV because you did the LOI. So I'll do it. Um, uh, the interview prep course. Uh, this is the one thing that everybody's like, oh my gosh, help me get through the interview. And I'll give you the big kind of uh, takeaways from this one. Uh, first of all, you're going to be asked two types of questions. You can have kind of a straightforward question, and there's one mnemonic to help you get through that. But then you're going to be asked a situational question. So let's say that you had a code, and then you found out there was another code. Which one would you go to? What would you do about the second code? And so forth, and those types of things. Like, so what do you do? Uh, and there's a mnemonic, four-letter mnemonic to, to help you with that. Uh, Pre-residency audio academy. So if you're just like, I don't know if I even want to do residency, I'm just kind of want to check things out. Uh, that's for free and for you uh, or for parents. <laughs> so uh, every once in a while, you know, it's actually a lot more common now, uh, but a parent will become involved and, and they want to, to help their child with residency and they kind of want to get an idea and, and all those things. And then phase two, it does happen. And phase two was the uh, most successful this year that's ever been. Um, so uh, I want to say out of the 25 people I helped, I want to say like eight got a residency or nine, nine, nine got a residency. So it can happen. Uh, obviously, the odds uh, are not in your favor as much as, as the other ones. Uh, may the odds forever be in your favor or whatever that quote is. But uh, again, phase two, uh, I do help you with getting that done in those four uh, very, very trying days. Okay, but let's, let's talk a little bit more about Extreme LOI Makeover. Uh, what I do and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get you to understand a process. So I help you with the first letter. And right now, if you're sending it to me in summer, you know, it doesn't even count to your two letters that I'll do later in the season. I just help you with the first one so you understand what gaps you have. Because if you're going to come to me in November or December and like, oh my gosh, uh, thanks for helping me with my letter, but I, I don't have any research. It's like, I know if you would, you know, contacted me in August, I could have been like, hey, you know, you, you don't have a research or an ASHP poster or uh, anything. We need to kind of fill in that box of the big five, you know, the clinical research, teaching, service, and leadership. Uh, you got to make sure you got at least address uh, all five uh, as you're kind of doing that. Uh, but what I do is I, I get you through the first letter and then I help you with the second letter. And then you can see, oh, okay. So I'm not really rewriting it all over again, but I'm also not putting in, it was nice to meet blank at ASHP. I am so honored to apply to blank residency. Uh, you don't want to do that. It really doesn't work at all. Uh, it becomes generic, it's stilted, and people that are reading dozens of these letters can spot it from a mile away. So you want to kind of create a new one. And I get it. Some of you are like, look, I am not a writer or English is not my first language. It's okay. You can make an original letter from the past letter, but make sure that past letter is an original letter. So you just don't want to use that UCSF 
I want to express my sincere interest. It was great to meet you guys at ASHP. It's like so obvious you're using that one. And then the ACCP one and the ASHP example ones are pretty terrible. I mean, it's it's an embarrassment. You put it into Grammarly and I think one of them was like a 70 and the other one was like a low 80. Your letters, when I'm done with them, are, are 100s. But or 99s if there's a reason to use passive voice from time to time. But your letter should be 90-somethings uh, in Grammarly. And uh, I know what happened. Uh, those content in ACCP and ASHP of those letters came from students who applied, and maybe they even got the residency. But that's correlation and causation. They thought that because they got a residency, that letter was part of it. A lot of times, and this happens with professors a lot, professors will tell you to use the UCSF template. And what they think is, well, I use the UCSF, UCSF template and I got a residency. They were probably so qualified that what happened was that the residency committee was like, all right, despite the fact that they used this letter, we're just gonna chop off the first paragraph and not even look at it. Uh, we're gonna take this person. So it's unfortunate, but I have seen where uh, professors are teaching a course on getting a residency, are telling you to use the template because that's the safe thing, and it actually isn't. It's very unsafe uh, to use that because the most important thing with a letter of intent is being noticed because the most likely thing to happen is you will be forgotten and that's why it's so important to make sure that your letter is unique uh, and looks good. So uh, that $95 is for the, the two letters um, as we go. And, and you get two revisions for each one, but um, it's rare that somebody even, most people are just like, oh my gosh, it's so much better. I'm like, I know, I've been doing this before. But I do have an, if you want my qualifications, I, my undergrad is in English and I was working on a PhD in English. I've actually taught comp one and comp two uh, freshman and sophomore English uh, in a four-year college. So I, I know what I'm doing with this stuff. And I don't give you recommendations like, here's some comments and stuff you could do. I just fix it. I don't have time for that. If you want to become a better writer, great. But it takes, if you're from a different country, it takes eight years to get academic English. So you don't have eight years. You probably are going to have something like eight weeks uh, to get all of this stuff done. So I'll just fix it. Uh, checkbox CV and resume planner. Uh, there's a number of uh, free uh, things you can look at here too, but uh, I will help you with a CV or resume. Um, and you're like, well, I don't understand. You do two LOIs. Why do you do one CV? CVs are extremely, extremely detailed and tedious and very difficult to do. And it just takes a ton of time uh, to fix a CV, especially if it's like seven pages. Where the LOI is between one and two pages, this is like seven or eight pages. And it just takes a lot of work. So uh, if you want, I can help you with that. Uh, the interview, uh, this is one where you really have a good understanding of the point system. And many people don't even realize there is a point system. But the reason you got the interview in the first place was because there was some rubric that got you to a certain number of points. Then, and I've talked to many residency directors who are like, the rubric is useful for getting rid of like half, but then there's the other half. And um, there's a number of tiers, T-I-E-R-S, uh, of number of uh, applications. So there are sites with 60 or less applications. There are sites with 100 or less, and then there are kind of sites with 100 or more, and those are the three tiers. And depending on where you're going, um, someplace like uh, Maryland, for example, is going to have a couple hundred applications, and they have a lot of ties. And so after the tie becomes, okay, well, who do you know? Who do we know? Um, who stood out? Uh, those types of things. Um, but what I do with the residency interview prep is, uh, in addition to giving you the the kind of point system, the three types of, the three interviews within the interview. So you have like the interview interview, which is like questions and answers. And then you have the uh, presentation part of the interview, and then you have the case study. And I address all of these in the course, but what I do is for your PowerPoint presentation, I ask you to send that to me, 
and I will review the grammar and syntax and also give you some pointers, no pun intended, but it's, I've seen so many of these presentations. The one thing I will caution you not to do is to do the prescription because that is a trope that many people use or the soap note, that's what it is, where people are like subjective and then you talk about yourself like the subjective things and then like objective, GPA 3.96 or GPA 3.5 and then assessment, this would be a great candidate for residency, plan matched to your site and it really falls as trite and uh, it's it's even more painful and I, I've seen this before where two students in the same interview had the same soap presentation that really just fell apart what works really well is a geographic presentation so for me it would be I went from Montgomery County Maryland uh, which is we we're in the poor part of the rich neighborhood but in it's a relatively wealthy suburb outside of Washington DC and kind of how I went from one high school to another high school to uh, doing some college classes there then I went down to Gainesville uh, where <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking I'm like uh, in my head I was going to Florida to go to the beach uh, Gainesville's in the middle of the state it's two hours each way like if I wanted to go to the beach like go to Florida State so I could be near the panhandle or go to Miami so I can be near the uh, Miami Beach or whatever uh, even though it's in Coral Gables but yeah I really blew it there uh, but anyway and, th and then coming back to Maryland uh, because you know I, I didn't succeed as, as much as I would have liked to Florida and I needed to retake some classes including organic which is brutal they're like oh yeah sorry our lab and course are together so even though you pass the lab at Florida um, you're gonna need to take it again so I retook organic too uh, and physics and biology one and calculus one and calculus two uh, so I had to really work hard for this uh, but anyway uh, the interview prep uh, that's kind of the, the next step. And then uh, if you are P1, P2, P3, just kind of like, look, man, I got broke as a joke. I got nothing going on. It's free. Just, you know, go in the Audio Academy. It's uh, I've curated a number of episodes. I know that some people are like, you have 500 episodes. You make it so hard. Uh, but um, that's pre-residency Audio Academy. And then phase two cover letter course. Uh, if you do need help with phase two uh, and then with phase two I do it in 24 hours so um, as I, I do the letter of intents in 24 hours as we get kind of closer to the deadline um, but that 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 is later in the process uh, but with phase two because it's so compact you have four days to get your application in um, I, I do it like right away and it's always in spring break so like before anybody wakes up in the house, I'm like doing these letters of intent and usually I'm at my parents' house in Arizona, uh, but whatever. Uh, anyway, um, so kind of going back to the email list. So go to memorizingfarm.com forward slash residency, uh, join the email list and you'll get the weekly updates and freebies when it comes to you know publishing. Like when, when <clears throat> we're done with perils of pharmacotherapy, uh, I'll probably get 25 free audio codes. So I'll, I'll give the, those guys out to this email list. And then uh, also um, the, the debt-free pharmacy student, I'll have free audiobook codes. And then I'll get a bunch of audiobook codes for like uh, the letter of intent one and, and a bunch of other ones. So, um, you know, join the list. Um, be excited to kind of have some back and forth with you as we do this. Uh, and then if you got any questions, TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com. Uh, just kind of a, a why I do this. Um, it really doesn't make a lot of money in terms of like my family's financial, like it, it, it re this, the money I make from this represents like 2% of our annual income or 3%. It's not a lot. Uh, so the reason I do this is because when I went to high school, I really didn't understand what high school was about and why grades were important. And if I were to go back now in picking a college, it would be picking a college and doing all the hard work during high school to do well. So my parents wouldn't have to pay for college because that's such a burden. Uh, it was such a burden on them. And But I didn't understand that private school tuition is just a fake number that you totally 
everybody gets a scholarship type thing with merit aid and stuff like that. I had no idea. So I, I didn't go to, I didn't even apply to any private schools. I went to Florida because it was a $10 application and they gave me in-state tuition for two years. Like that's the dumbest reason ever to, to go to a school. Um, but it was cheaper than Maryland in state and, you know, had a great time, too much of a great time. Uh, and then came back to Maryland for a year. And after three years of pre-pharmacy, you know, made it to pharmacy school and through. But I really have a place in my heart for people that are from other countries that are international and are kind of navigating this or your first generation and you're kind of trying to figure out how to get through this and to this. But also, I understand the pain of rejection and that is brutal. When everybody's on Facebook like, I'm, you know, hashtag blessed. I'm so honored that I can't believe I got the residency and all that. And you're seeing all your friends getting accepted and you didn't. And I just don't want that to happen to you. I just want, and, and I know that um, there are preventable rejections. And if I were to have like a theme, it is I prevent rejections through good editing. And I don't mean grammar editing. I mean fixing it so that you state your thesis in a clear and concise way so that you don't articulate the wrong things like, well, I'm going to move there because I really think it's nice weather or something like that. So it just it, bad things happen uh, with good intentions. And I just want to make sure that your letters are rock star and awesome. So, all right, well, I've gone almost 30 minutes, so I've got to be done with this. So I will um, see you guys next week. We've got a couple more episodes from a student that I'm working with. Uh, first one is going to be on mental health. Second one is on time management, which are kind of together. And then I'll talk a little bit about money and mental health because it may seem like, man, what is that cloud hanging over me? But being in debt that you cannot repay immediately, which you all are that have loans, uh, is actually as stressful as losing a loved one. Uh, and the data show this. So we're going to talk about that and, and how to kind of deal with those types of things and mental health uh, and time management. So Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com. If you want to uh, help with your LOIs and all that stuff, it's residency.teachable.com.